would have been the same day for you, wouldn't it? Anyways, I'm not going to try to figure that out. All right, welcome. My name is Chris Bailey. This is C. Bailey Film. I wanted to do a breakdown today of the um, the new CG short for Star Wars Squadron. So this is the short called Hunted that uh, just put out. Really awesome stuff. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, it's an amazing short. Um, and uh, yeah, it's really, really exciting. But I thought it'd be a great chance to look through something that's been made by a studio that's been, you know, got a lot of money and a lot of people behind it and talk about some of the ideas that they're doing and some of the things that they're, um, I guess, working with to make this thing so powerful and so really interesting. So the idea about today, what I wanna do is talk through it. We're gonna pick a few moments, kind of go frame by frame. We're gonna look at the animation. We're gonna look at what they've done, talk about how we might do the same thing in Blender and more importantly, how you might apply it to your own work. So if you're making a fan film or you know, you're doing some kind of Star Wars thing and you wanna be able to apply you know, the same ideas that they're using here to bring a lot of energy and power to your work, and hopefully we can we can extrapolate some stuff for you to uh, to take a look at. So um, really cool stuff. So um, the best part about this is, is you could make this entire thing in Blender. Um, if you did it yourself, it would take a very long time. Uh, it would take a long time, but you could do it. Technically, you could do it. So let's, um, let's kick this thing off. I'm just gonna start playing and we're gonna stop and just kind of take moments and talk through them and go frame by frame. I'll make sure you've got, yeah, you can hear it too. All right, so we'll stop here. Now, this this planet that you see here, um, this is definitely being made with some texture. So we've got some photograph uh, material here um, that they're using. And you can see that, you know, we've got a lot of shine here on these water surfaces. And one technique with that is to use something like a Fresnel shader or a matte, some kind of like, you know, gradient in your shader to kind of cut off a part of it and make it really, really um, uh, specular, really, really glossy. and um, they might have a texture file here that, that's actually creating these breakups, right? So they have these, these areas where we've got, obviously got some kind of water going on and they'd have a light kind of sitting off here that really causes that reflection to happen. But they may actually, you know, be purposely grading it off so that it doesn't continue through. Now these clouds and stuff, most likely they're not a volumetric effect. So it's probably not a big simulation. It's probably just a photograph, probably even a, a photograph from space of the earth uh, maybe photoshopped a bit you know and, and kind of tweaked a little bit and put it around most likely um because that's the most cost effective way of doing this kind of a thing and the atmosphere here um it a nice gradient glow um this can be done in a, as a compositing trick um it may not be actually done in 3d it could be something that they're adding in later but um that blur right there is kind of a typical thing you see of atmosphere um and they could just take that edge and blur that in post um, but they may also be using some kind of glow effect or even like another object here that has a like a, a Fresnel shader that as it gets closer to camera, it fades away. Stuff that we usually do. Now this model here is really nice. But one of the things that makes it so nice is all the little um, the, the little uh, grime, dust scratches, things like that that you see. So we've got like, you know, these little bits that are reflective and then bits that aren't. So again, you could use that, like use something like a Musgrave texture in Blender and uh, you know, create some noise with that to break up the reflection, just like we did if you caught the, the droid live stream that we just did uh, the other day or yesterday or today, depending on what time you're in. Um, we did the same thing there. That's the same technique they're using here uh, to create that breakup. So that's a really good thing. Otherwise, your models can look really flat um, if you just have the straight color on it. But you add this like noise and it really, really, really turns it up. So um, now let's keep going. Um, Another important thing to note is this planet. The planet plays a really important geographic role for the whole short, so it keeps the audience oriented. Um, you'll notice it pops up a lot. Now, we start getting explosions as we go frame by frame here. Now, you can see these explosions are just like what we've been doing in the um, how to make a short uh, sci-fi movie um, in Blender. So it's the same kind of concept, just creating those short pop explosions um, and having a couple reusable ones throwing in. Now, as we start to have explosions happen on the ship, there's a couple of really important things that make this image look so nice. One of them is volumetrics. So they've got a haze now in the scene. This haze, you can see here, it's, it's the gradient, gradient color and it kind of blocks everything and makes it a bit hard to see things behind it. And bright lights are causing it to light up. So this could be done in post, but we could also do it like we do in Blender where we use a volume shader and you just add that to your world. And now anything that's bright, any light that shines in your scene is gonna light up the volume. So if I go forward a little bit, 
you can see they're also adding in tiny lens flares. I don't know if you can make those out, but there's these little lens flare pings that they've added for each explosion. Now that's something you would add in, in compositing. So you would use um, something like After Effects or Nuke or uh, Fusion or any of those compositing tools or Natron. And you, you add in a, 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 a lens flare effect. And just for a moment, they're like keyframing it to like go bright and then just dim right off. And they're, they're sticking it right on top manually, just right on top of those explosions. Now this is a really nicely designed uh, shot. Um, and you can see it's intentional that they've done this flip because it's really dramatic and powerful. And now they're introducing the lasers. Um, now it's cool with these lasers, it's kind of a nice design. It's not just a straight, you know, like cylinder with like a glowy emission shader on it. that's kind of uniform. It's got a, it fades off. So it's actually like, it's almost like a, a smaller, you know, oval blast that has this, this trail to it. And that's kind of cool. Actually, that'd be it really helps show like the direction that it's traveling in. It might be something worth um, exploring for ourselves. The other interesting thing is that they have their explosions start off green. So they the, were the color of the laser. So you can see it's actually a green explosion that goes yellow and then goes orange and then blows out. Now this explosion, I mean, this is like just, you know, 101 explosions in Blender. Like there's nothing really special about this. This is um, stuff that you could do in Blender easily. And, um, and, but again, see how they've layered it. They've got the sparks with the explosion and that's a really Star Wars look. Um, so if you're going for Star Wars, you want to see these, these little sparks and the explosions. I mean, any, you see it a lot in Star Trek too. It's, it's any kind of, that, what they're coming from is like that whole world of model building where they had like the models and they would blow up the models and they would throw in these little spark things that would just kind of add some texture to it. And so it became the look, you know, that we expect to see. And so now we're adding it in digitally to create the same look. Now, a lot of really detailed stuff going on here. Now they would have had a team, right? And so they would have broken this down and separate people would have been doing different things. And so one person, you know, or maybe even a couple people would have been working on just this one ship and creating these different explosion simulations on it. Um, and then they would have brought that in to the main scene here um, once it was complete. So a lot of detail. These are really big explosions. If you wanted to imitate this in Blender, you'd actually want to imitate the scale. So the scale is massive of this ship, right? It's humongous. And um, you can see that there's a lot of details in this explosion. And remember in Blender that explosions are, um, they're like, they're, 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 they simulate in real world space, right? So in, in Blender, you know what one, one grid square is one meter, right? Or you can change that depending on how you do your settings. But typically when you open it up, one square is one meter. So if you have a ship that's like, you know, kilometers across, and you want to have an explosion that feels like it's fitting in that kind of a space, you actually need to make a domain that's kilometers across and have an explosion that emits in that domain across kilometers. And the, you know that'll take a long time to simulate. Um, so they're using really powerful machines to create these sims. Actually, they may not be. They could be using the new, um, there's that new, uh, uh, what's it called? The Octane, is it Octane? No, I forget who's doing it, but that really cool real-time uh, fluid or you know smoke and explosion simulator um, that's out right now. It's incredible. Um, so it may not have taken a lot of machines to do this, but the important thing is the scale. So if you created like a tiny little domain, you know, in Blender, like just kind of scaled up a cube and did an explosion, it's not going to look like this because that's just like a one meter explosion. So if you picture like a yardstick or a meter stick in your room and think about an explosion happening there, it's going to be just kind of like a poof of smoke with like a flash. And that's often what our sims look like when we have a small domain. So huge domain, really big explosion. Um, now, the other thing that's really nice is look at the reflections in this ship. Um, really, really nice reflections there. So this is with roughness is the, the value in Blender that you would be tweaking to get that that reflection. And this is a really um, not a, not a, getting close to zero, but not zero because it's not a perfect reflection. It's It's blurred a lot. So that blurred reflection comes from a roughness that's like, you know, it's less than less than 0.5. And uh, yeah, it's looking really good. Now, take note, the planet position, right? So we've just, we've introduced the planet and now we've flipped around. The planet's still in front of us. So we know we're heading towards this planet. And then we introduce the hero. So right away, the hero of the whole short film is like introduced. So this whole shot is actually designed to introduce the hero. Um, so you can see we, we pull in and it's like the first, it's the first uh, Imperial fighter we see, right? So we get the dramatic explosion, this huge thing that's meant to wow us. And then we introduce our hero, we bring him in. Now you're not thinking this is the hero, but you just, 
you're focusing on it. Now also notice these two red lights, there's nothing else in this entire shot that's that color, right? These two red lights are very unique right now in the frame. So even though there's all this noise and all this stuff going on, you, you, can, you can follow this guy, right, easily because you've got these two red lights that just make him stand out. And then boom, we got two more red lights and it's, it's just a really great visual design. Um, now, okay, what's really interesting here is look at this, look at the, 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 um, the, uh, the decision about the camera move, okay? So we've got the really steady camera, the explosions happen, they do the dramatic flip, and then we do this really smooth, steady whip pan kind of up, right? following the squadron as they take shape, we see the Rebel Alliance ships, right? And they're throwing in little like bursts, like see this like laser that just kind of cuts across the screen. Some of these could have been done in the composite. Um, same with like the debris, like this little piece of, de piece of debris that's like flying across the screen right now, or this little pop of an explosion that's down in the corner, even these fighters on the distance. They're not necessarily doing all of this in 3D in one scene in there for their one camera. You could, but they're not necessarily doing it. You can go into a composite later and throw little details in like this to, to, to fill out a shot. But see now, watch, watch what's happening. The hero ship is in the middle of the frame, right? So it's the focal point. You have a line of TIE fighters, right? Two lines pointing at that hero ship. So this is like, you know, art class 101. It's, it's composition. So we're creating these compositional lines that are guiding the eye to the hero while we're introducing these explosions. You can see this explosion doesn't cross in front of the hero. He stays center of frame. Now, as they start approaching, this is really interesting, as they start approaching the Rebel Alliance, right? And we get more lasers coming in and the chaos picks up. Watch what happens to the camera. See how the camera starts to get shaky, right? So it was really smooth and then they introduced noise into the camera motion. Now, you know, you can do that in Blender using you know, the graph editor, you can go in and you can add in a noise modifier to your camera to create motion like that, right? And you can also designate when it starts and when it ends. So you can fade it on and then fade it off. So you can have that noise and then that noise can stop. So they've got a really gradual camera. Everything's in control. They're trying to reflect the interstate of the hero characters, right? The, these these um, Imperial ships. So, you know, it's really calm. They're in control and now we're moving into the chaos. And so suddenly the camera starts to reflect that. So that's a great way to amp up the tension in your scene. Um, and now we're pivoting, we're continuing to keep the hero ship in the center. Now, again, we're also not blocking the hero ship. So we have this, this massive explosion right here, really exciting stuff. So let's talk about what's going on here. So um, this uh, laser, the red laser hits, intersects and keeps flying through. So they've decided to go for a, um, you know, the idea that lasers are piercing things and they're not like disappearing when they impact, which is kind of a cool, Cool idea. It helps actually create a lot of um, impact. You have the initial, so you've got nothing, and then we have an initial explosion that's kind of just over top of this guy. This could be done in composite as well. It doesn't have to be done. You know, you could just render that out separately. You might want to use the same camera move so you get all the right motion blur with it, but you could do that separately just to kind of keep things clean and then composite it in later. Now, they begin to break up the ship, right? So this might actually be a separate model. So this TIE fighter, we've got one TIE fighter model, and now we've turned that one off and we've turned on our separate model, which is our fractured one that we caused to kind of break apart. Now, it's so small and so brief, it wouldn't be cost effective to do a sim for that. So you wouldn't want to like shatter it and then you use like physics dynamics to like simulate it falling apart. You would pretty much just hand animate that. You'd have two versions of the ship, one that's just broken into four parts, and you'd kind of just animate those pieces flying off. And this explosion, again, kind of looks like it's just layered on top. Um, and the reason for that is they want all the controls so they can put it where they want it in frame. Because again, see, it doesn't block our hero ship. And also, they've added that lens flare again. So there's that lens flare that they put in from the comp, and then they fade it off. So it's subtle, it's quick, boom, and then that's it, it's gone. So again, we're focusing in on the hero ship. Now we're really introducing the hero character and look at the placement of the earth or you know, the planet. So again, geography, if it's just black space, it's a little hard to know where we are, but this planet helps us ground ourselves. We figure out where we are in space. Um, and again, with the dramatic spins and stuff, you can hide a lot with good motion blur. So, you know, this spin is, is really, it's about the dramatic impact of the shot. 
Um, and you can see they're doing the same thing where they start off with a smooth camera and then they start to make it shaky, right? Actually, that's just for one explosion. They're just throwing in the occasional shake to kind of match up with an explosion. And all of these lens flares, again, this is stuff they're adding in post manually. Now, we zoom in on our hero ship. Now, this is a really good example of global illumination in space. Now, you know they're using global illumination, so they'd be, they'd be rendering with something like, for example, cycles, right? Um, now, the, the cycles global illumination, you're getting this light here on the inside of the wing. And the main source, the light source you can see is coming from this angle and it's bouncing off the ship. And so you get this like referred lighting in this space and kind of lights this up. So you, you wouldn't be able to get this in EV out the box. Now you could probably get something similar with the new EV screen space for um, uh, global illumination, that amazing plugin that, um, I forget the name of the person that made it, but really, really cool. You can check that out, just Google it. Um, that starts getting you this in, in EV, but true global illumination is what we're looking at. So they would have done this with like an actual you know, global illumination renderer like cycles. Um, now, I don't know what software they use to make this because it's an established studio. My guess is Maya, just because that's just what they all use. And the reason they all use it is because, well, A, it used to be the best. Now there's Blender, which is way better, obviously, but they can't switch to Blender because they've got all these like proprietary tools that they've built in their studio. They've got all these pipelines that they've built. They've spent, you know, years and years and thousands of dollars, like building all these plugins and things that are custom for their studio. And it's all dependent upon Maya. So that's why a lot of them just stick with Maya um, and haven't, you know, woken up to the fact that Blender's obviously way, way, way better and clearly going to eclipse anything Autodesk could put their hand to. I mean, you know, what can you, you can't argue with that. Um, and we jump inside the ship and now we definitely see global illumination. Now there's a lot of global illumination going on. You can see the reflection, but also like the blue light picks up on the you know the back here is a lot of nice shallow depth of field to really like make it feel cinematic um, little camera moves little jerks and jostles with the camera that's really important so we get that sense of the action um, same here little jostles and little 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 movements and stuff um, just keep going through call off the attack Okay, so now what's really cool about this is that, you know, we talked about um, um, the first thing that we, uh, uh, one, of the, one of the first things we talked about in the making a sci-fi movie series is, is the importance of emotional connection. You can have a bunch of ships flying around blowing each other up, but you're not going to really connect anyone. And they're doing a great job of giving us an emotional hook with that moment right there. So um, from a storytelling perspective, this is this is really great because you get this this really nice moment. I'll watch it again because I we actually didn't hear it. Um, so you get this really nice moment where this character we expresses his disappointment. Captain, the station is lost. Call off the attack. So you hear that sigh? He goes, you know. Squadrons, dis another big sigh, big shoulder. Squadrons disengage. You totally get his disappointment. And what's so cool is that it instantly makes him empathetic, right? Which is cool because, you know, when is the Empire ever empathetic? You never connect with them. And so suddenly we're empathetic um, to this guy. And we, we begin the disengage sequence. But anyways, what that has done now is that, so the first part of this, this short is just exciting and action-packed. You're like, whoa, explosions, Star Wars, this is so cool. But they don't go too far. So we're only 40. 40 seconds into this thing and they hit us with an emotional region to to care and that's so important if you're making like a fan film or you're doing like a little short if you want to really take your stuff up to the next level give your audience a reason to care about the characters within the first like you know 40 seconds of your short or whatever um you want to hit them hit them with it really really fast so what we do in um you know making a sci-fi movie the in the the series that we're doing right now on my channel it's uh, it's the little droids that we've got that the scanner droids that go out to scan the asteroids. We're creating empathy with the audience with them by making them cute and they're kind of fun. And then they're the ones that start getting attacked by the spider bot when it flies out. So um, we're going to do some action sequences like this uh, coming up soon. I hope to even get to that today a bit later on, do another stream where we animate 
um, some more of making a sci-fi uh, battle. I really want to get back into that because we're at the really exciting stuff. We're going to have things flying around and blowing things up. So stay tuned to that. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> That was a really cool move. It, you watch moves like that and you don't really think about what you just saw. You just kind of go with it. But if you're trying to create this on your own, it's really tough actually. So let's think about what they just did here with this shot. So first thing they would have done is they would have planned it out, right? Now, one of the things that's really working well here is that it's a simple motion. And I can't stress this enough. When you're doing a fight sequence, if you have your ships, the focal point of your shot, your main ship, have it fly in a very simple, clear arc uh, or a simple motion. Just think about one motion. So if you f we see he's this, he zooms off and it's like this big arc, right? It's not too crazy. And that gives us a chance to allow the camera to move with him and bring in some more interesting, subtle, interesting motion. So you see, it's the camera that's really making this shot quite interesting. So you know, we push in with our camera while he's doing that simple arc. And then we are coming down alongside him and then getting just behind him, letting him lead. And then we, we, we slow down and let him pull ahead. And then they start introducing a little bit of shake, but it's a real simple, it's like an arc and the camera follows the arc and then pulls in behind. If you start getting too many curves and too many motions with your camera, your fighters, whatever, it can get really messy really quick and not look good. Another really important thing is the planet. It's still there, right? So now we know where we are again, because we've already seen this shot. We've seen this, the Star Destroyer in the distance. We've seen the planet. So again, we have a clear sense of where we are. We're oriented in the scene. Now, again, this is all about the emotional impact of what we're seeing. So, you know, we've just seen the disappointment of this character. The music's really leaning into that disappointment. It's giving us a very sad chorus. And as it's sad and as he's sad and he said, oh, another retreat, we're looking down and we're seeing all the destruction. And so it's like, wow, now we're really feeling their loss. We understand what this means. Now, this is a very epic shot. Um, lots of explosions, lots of really cool stuff. All these are just sims uh, that they've run. You know, really nice ones. Like this one's amazing. Um, and then we get that nice reflection in his, his, his mask. Another retreat. Yeah, there it is. Another retreat. It's a great one. Oh my God. Now, we're, we're ramping up the tension here because the Star Destroyer is about to take off. So we get this nice, you know, shot where the the um, the jets cook on, and they've got a lot of blur, so much blur right here from the heat waves. But the idea is that these are so massive that you wouldn't see the actual individual heat waves. So it's just going to come across visually as a big blur. Um, really, really nice effect. But this blur you could just do in post. You don't have to worry about trying to figure out this in um, in Blender itself or in whatever software you're using. Um, Now, this is a nice thing too. They're changing their lens sizes. So this is a really long lens. And what I mean by long, it's, it's zoomed in. So it'd be like 105, 125, 200 millimeter lens on the camera. Um, and same with this one here. And then what the effect of that does is it really compresses space. Um, and you can really get a sense of the parallax that's going on if you're having a really big move um, across something. And this, you can see here, they're doing this nice lateral motion. Now they could have just like kept this shot still, you know, or just pushed in, but that's not as interesting. By going across like this, you're having all of these really interesting perspective lines moving around and that keeps the shot really, really cool, really dynamic. And always more explosions and always little jerks of the camera. But you can see how they're keeping these like circular cross motions. If you notice a lot of the shots, you know, like when he flew back to the ship, we're like crossing, you know, from, from left to right. And now here we're looking at the ship, the other direction, we're crossing from right to left. Um, that's to create contrast, you know, the two directions, zoom, zoom, but also it's to keep us oriented because we're, you know, it's like we're, it helps us feel like we're looking in the opposite direction of what we were looking at when the ship turned around. Captain, come in. This is Titan three. I'm pinned down. Come on, we still have ties out. <laughs> Really nice like acceleration in those shots. 
like, you know, that motion of like you start up kind of slow and then it's zoom really flies out. That can create a lot of punch. We're not handing the enemy one. Um, and also too, notice they just keep doing these spins with the camera. Keep spinning the camera. More destroyer, Captain. The overseer is leaving. And we're focusing more on the character too. Do you notice that? Like a lot more stuff with character, less of the, the environment. The environment's getting more like blurred out and we're focusing more on, on him because we're just amping up the character part of what's going on in this. I'm not going to make it. All right, so now this is the moment we really start to care. Okay, now, you know, we, we can relate to his disappointment when he says, oh, another defeat and blah, blah, blah. But I don't know, you may not have actually really connected to him 100% there, but this is the moment. This is actually the part that really makes this short film work. This whole short film hinges on this moment. He makes a decision, an active choice. So he's a main character who makes an active choice. That's super important for storytelling. He can have a passive main character. He's a main character who makes an active choice to turn back, risk his life. We know that he's, if he does this, he's not going to catch the, you know, he might miss the Star Destroyer when it jumps into light speed. And he goes back for this other person who's, you know, part of his squadron that's left behind. We'll catch that audio a bit. Hang on, I'll go back. Still have ties out. We're not handing the enemy one more destroyer, Captain. The Overseer is leaving. So the Overseer is leaving. He has a beat there. Did you notice that? He stops for a second. He doesn't just make a The enemy one more destroyer, Captain. The Overseer is leaving. His overseer is leaving. He listens to the line. He doesn't do anything. doesn't take any action. He listens. And then when she finishes saying it, then he engages. Okay, now that's showing us that he hears what she says and he's just making a decision like and it's strong when he does. It's not like he's already turned around and stuff like they wait for that moment to do this because they're showing us that he's making a really strong decision. Um, now, you're not thinking about that as you're watching it, but but man, it's got impact, um, emotional impact. And then we introduce the risk. We've got the chasing. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. And he saves the day, right? And it's really cathartic because this is, this is you know, we've just built some empathy for this first the character that's in danger. We built some empathy for him already now because he's made this decision that we really respect and we're like on board with that. And and then he, he succeeds. And even better, she gets away. I thought I was done for. I thought I was done for. You know, really nice little moment between the two of them. It's all about them right now. All this stuff is just set dressing. The explosions in the background, you know, it's like what really matters and what's really making this powerful is what's happening between these two. Um, the hangar pilot. And then she doesn't make it, which, you know, disappointing. And that is what makes us hate this guy. Which is wild, you know, like this, this rebel pilot that, you know, now is a bad guy. All right, so think about the framing of this, right? There's a really tight shot on his face. They've got the, 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 the evil music is kicked in. Like, it's really obvious that we're not supposed to like this guy. He's just killed this person that our you know, hero risked his life to save. So it's just set up that conflict. Now look at this render, right? Heaps of um, out of focus depth of field, right? And we have just this little sliver of stuff that's in focus, really shallow depth of field. Um, You've got some nice subsurface scattering on the skin here with the nose. You can see that because the, the light's bleeding through here in the color. Um, and the, uh, the, the, you can see that scatter that's happening. It's, it's really nice. And then all the, the green reflections and stuff. Um, again, this is all pretty straightforward stuff for you know shaders in Blender. Um, all right, now we're introducing a lot of volumetrics in this next bit. So a lot of like smoke. <laughs> And you can see it's creating these light shafts that are cutting through. All stations. Light speed on my mind. Now, okay, you got a lot of debris and stuff. These are probably just particles that they've just generated, put into the, into the space. <laughs> this is a really nice moment. Oh, come on. Okay, see that? Low angle. Think about the lens choice. We're dead center. He's center frame. We're low angle looking up. This is a hero shot. We've given him a hero shot. Like we're really looking up at this guy, but also really feel the anticipation because it's mirroring the low angle of 
of the shot of the 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 star destroyer so it's both of those things working together they cut really nicely together because we're looking up at the star destroyer now do you see that so we're looking up at that we're looking up at him and they fit really well and we're looking up at the hatch this is all about we're like looking up and it's just creating this sense of like anxiety in the audience because you're like craning up okay now listen to what they do with the sound there and the music goes silent that's really powerful when you're creating sound design for your shorts and stuff figure out moments where you can take all the sound away because it really helps amplify the moments where you do have a lot of sound and that's a great moment to do it you know we've switched tone very different tone now um it's not much more to say in terms of rendering and what's going on with the imagery so it's the same kind of stuff just the materials and uh, the using that nice depth of field um, and definitely rendering with some kind of global illumination and then finding you know compositing tricks where you can and again think about each of these shots as kind of self-contained scenes right so that moment where he looks up and sees the stuff overhead it doesn't necessarily have to mean that it's all in a scene where it's all working together perfectly in, in 3D space in the right way. Like that could have just been, like brought those assets into a new project file. We just have this one moment where the camera pans up and we just position everything just right for that shot. And then we go do a new, new scene file for the next shot. On your way. Nice close up. Look again at the lens size. They've used that really long lens. So again, like, like a, you know, 150 mil or something like that. That gives us this nice shallow depth of field. And we're super tight on his face. And look, the camera's constantly doing the spin. And it's it's alternating. So the spin is this way when it's over his shoulder. And then we're coming into him, we're going this way. So it's back and forth, back and forth. That 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 alternating motion is really interesting for the viewer. Now this is a great shot, right? Super cool. There's a little bit of um uh, chromatic aberration on the edges of the frame you can really see here a little bit and that's a nice thing you can get blender has that with the, the there's a there's a node for that in compositing you can throw on again the planet so we're still oriented to our scene um, now there's a couple of different particle things going on there So again, think about this as its own shot. They've set this project file up, made this thing work just for this shot. Same here with the, the light and stuff. Like probably they've just you know put some geometry outside this window and animated the light across to get that perfect shadow that really matches well with the shot we just saw. Um, it's all about crafting each moment individually. Again, with the low angle stuff too on him, we keep seeing him in this low angle hero shot. But also he's looking up, so it kind of just fits, you know, like it's sort of, it gives that audience a sense that, you know, what, what we need to be paying attention to is all above us. All right, now we're introducing this volumetric, um, so some smoke into the scene, and we use this, they use this in a second with the flashlight beam. Now look at that, that's a really cool shot, isn't it? And what, part of what makes it cool is that super long lens again, so that 250 mil, you know, really super compressed space. But notice what they've done. Again, they've animated this thing crossing the frame diagonally, right? They're doing that little swoop around. I don't know if you've noticed they've done that like maybe 10 times now where they've got the nose of a ship and we're kind of angling around it. All right, now you can see now there's a lot of smoke in this shot because the, the beams are picking up that smoke and it really helps create that atmosphere and the density of atmosphere. They never let us see this guy's eyes. That's a really good way to make a character kind of evil in a way. Although we've never seen the eyes of the other character either, but um, it's helping us, helping this guy be a bad guy for us. Really nice uh, damage effects and stuff that they've added onto the ship. So this would be a new model um, and they would have these uh, added in. Now, these look like actual physical things they've put in the model, but they could actually just be a normal map with some texture painting. It's hard to say. Um, that's how effective normal maps can be. In shots like this, you, sometimes you can't tell. If we don't get too close to it, um, you know, you wouldn't actually know. Now, another thing that's kind of cool is just another good example. 
right here on this uh, this control, you can see that the grunge there. Again, grunge is just amazing for selling 3D assets and selling stuff, making it look good. So putting in like a musgrave texture on top of that, you know, on top of your regular normal material and like piping that into the roughness. So this bit's rougher than this bit. So this bit just reflects and this bit doesn't. It's really effective. Give me a moment. Can I go through what happened there? Um, Got all these. So again, I want to look at the camera for this, right? So think about it. He takes takes his shot. We start with this interesting frame where like the laser is the center focus. And it's a bit chaotic, right? Because this is a chaotic moment for him. He's kind of firing wild. And the camera flies back, does a spin. Again, always doing spins. It's got that subtle spin to it. And then off they go, off to the right of frame. And he peels away. So you can see the camera's just following him. The camera also lets him lead. That's another thing the camera does a lot, is it doesn't move perfectly with him. It lets the hero character, the focal point, lead, lead the camera. So the camera's like always just a little bit behind it. Now this this shot's putting us in the POV of the uh, the rebel fighter, so the point of view. And there's our there's the enemy there. And then we see his reaction shot. Reaction shots are really important. So if you show what a character sees, it's really important to then cut to the character so you can get their reaction. Um, the reason for that is it shows us how we should feel. So we're always empathizing with the characters we see on screen. And so their emotional state is something that we reflect. And we can pick up his emotional state. You see his lip kind of goes a bit stern there. And now we see what's going on. We see that these, these fire trails are heading down the planet. We see these heading towards the planet too. And then he lights up. Just really nice, clever storytelling. We're showing what he's thinking. Literally, like by, you know, projecting it over his face. You know what I mean? Um, so this is what internalizes for him. It's what he's seeing, what he's realizing, and then we rack focus to the reflection. Now you could get this, uh, you could try and get this in render um, if you had like a really, you know, super reflective surface, but this is most likely done in the composite because it's just going to be the most effective way to do it. So they would have rendered this as a separate shot and just had this blurred out and do that rack focus effect in After Effects or in, no, we didn't fact, they would have used Nuke, but um, it's the exact same result doesn't matter what software you use it's really important to know that like um you know if you're using any of these 3d packages or any of these compositing softwares you, it's really they're all just tools and it's really about the work of the artist and how well the artist knows how to use that tool and can the tool do all the things that the artist needs it to do um, and the answer is yes like blender has got all the tools that you need to do all this stuff um, so if you haven't learned blender yet jump on it now this stuff is all really cool. You know, this is again, like even just a, a normal particle emission, you know, a smoke and fire. Um, and uh, you could actually create, like you could use um, a particle system emitting from your geometry and let that particle system be the source for your fire simulation, your smoke simulation. And that's how you could get something like that. And you could model out a shape um, that's gonna be the entry cone um, for that friction point and, uh, and animate that to light up. You could see it's got like a a smoky kind of thing going on. So this would have been like a you know elongated sphere, kind of oval shape with a texture on it that you know fades off um, with a little bit of emission to make it shine. And again, look, lens flare. Again, that's something in post they've added. Camera shape. And again, see we're crossing. Again, it's that diagonal cross. We're always doing that diagonal cross. So cool. This whole thing's so cool. Um, so it's uh it's got it's got a lot of really great moments in it. Um, it's got a lot of really nice stuff. This whole second half um is you know, like the main thing about it is the global illumination. Like it's definitely got all the global illumination um because we're you know, we're in an environment. And a lot of times in space you don't have global illumination because it's like you've got a really harsh well, you do have it, you always have it technically in, in real life, but in terms of creating a realistic render. 
usually just have a really harsh singular light um, source that has high contrast. And that's what space really, you know, really looks like. Um, but uh, oh, no, we've actually already talked about that. Um, but what's 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 again super important about making this thing work it's it's the emotional connection that they build with the audience the fact that they create that empathy for that character and um and they keep relating to that character and helping us to connect to them it's really really cool really powerful stuff and it's what makes us really care about this and then they use the explosion stuff as like back dressing for it so anyways i hope that was really interesting i hope you learned a few things and picked up some cool tips about you know camera work how they're moving the camera, how they're thinking about the camera. So you remember they do just a lot of those lateral crosses across frame, a lot of those rotations, tons of that rotation stuff, having something to orient the audience in space, so the giant planet um, and the positioning of the Star Destroyers and the, the Rebel ships. But then most importantly, the emotional connection, the empathy they build with the main character so that we're on board for the show. You know, we're ready to watch. Um, really, really cool stuff. The use of global illumination uh, in its rendering, and also, I guess, uh, the emphasizing the point of how much compositing probably was going on for this. You know, the fact that so many of these things could have been done separately and brought together in a composite, and how you can think about action sequences like this um, as as kind of being individual projects, individual files that you come to and you custom build. You stick the stuff on that make it work just right. You know, for that shot, like when he's sitting in the cockpit, the lights going across him. You know, it's, it's, it's just worry about getting that to work. Don't worry about making this huge environment where everything's dynamic and it's perfect and you just put the camera in places and it's all going to work together. Um, that's just making things unnecessarily difficult for you. Um, it's much better to custom think about each shot and how is it doing it and what's the narrative purpose of each shot. If you do that kind of stuff, you're going to really take your own work to the next level um, and you'll find that uh, you're really able to really, you know, kind of, yeah, improve in a lot of ways. Um, and don't feel like you've got to do full sims, you know, like when you have the explosions back here at the beginning and things are breaking up, you know, and, and we've got all this really dramatic explosion stuff. Don't feel like you've got to do these full gigantic sims that are happening in real time, you know, across, you know, real 3D spaces. You know, render out cards, just render out an explosion uh, on a 2D plane and stick that in the distance. You know, a lot of these explosions never get close enough to the camera to see any depth. Like back here, these explosions in these ships, like that could just be a flat card you know of an image of a ship that you've rendered out uh, from another project file and you just stuck it in the background so that it's there or you put it in your composite um, so you know it's finding those moments of where does it really count where do you really need to have the 3d thing happening in 3d space around your camera and where does it not count when can you just have some stuff there that is filler in the background just to create that that shot and make that shot really awesome and save you time and save your computer you know time rendering stuff um, it's, it's a really important way of, of kind of breaking down each moment. And that's why it's really important, I think, to focus on what's important in a shot, get that right, and then build it out with everything else. Um, so I hope that these tips and ideas uh, give you some inspiration and get you excited to go make your own amazing stuff. So uh, don't forget to download Blender if you haven't and uh, start learning this thing because you could make amazing stuff like this given enough time and enough practice. And I hope you do. Uh, if you do, share it. It'd be great. The community loves to see all these things, everyone gets behind it and uh, it's, it's a really great community. Um, so if you haven't checked out my stuff, please have a look at my channel. I've got a lot of great tutorials on how to make things just like this. Um, we're in the midst of making a long uh, epic sci-fi battle just like this right now. Um, and uh, hopefully you, know, you can learn a lot through that too and figure out how to make these things for yourself. Please like and subscribe. Um, the channel really great to, to help it grow and for people to find out about it. Leave comments, I'll do my best to, to answer. And uh, please check out my Patreon and uh, the Blender Market, where I've got a lot of great stuff over there too. Um, it's really worth your time. Thanks so much for joining me today, everybody. I had a lot of fun breaking this down and uh, I hope you had a good time too. Let me know what you think of this kind of a stream. I really haven't done any videos like this on my channel at all yet. And I'd love to maybe do some more breakdowns of really cool moments and really cool animation so that we can you know, pull them apart and see how we can use them. So if you like this, uh, hit that like button. Um, and, uh, you know, if we get a bunch of likes and I'll really know that we're, everybody's into it and, uh, and leave some comments, let me know, give me some feedback. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much again for watching and I will catch you in the next video. See you later. Bye.